Mark here at Whiskey Whistle. The Singleton of Glenord 18 year Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, an Asian exclusive. Is this a bottle that you should be seeking out for yourself? Stay tuned for the Singleton of Glenord 18 year here on Whiskey Whistle. Hello people, I'm Mark, the host here at Whiskey Whistle, your wise choice in independent whiskey and spirits reviews. Bringing you whiskey review number 251, this is the Singleton of Glenord 18 year Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Something available only in Asia or perhaps through other means in other parts of the world. Let's get that poured into the classic malt selection nosing glass, perfect for this malt which is one of the extended classic malts of Scotland. We'll pour a nice sized dram of that one. And at the same time that I am preparing to do this review, I'll also be recording the Royal Loch Nagar 12 year Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey review. That'll be number 252, so stay tuned for that one. This is a very nice whiskey and the smallest distillery in the Diageo collection of distilleries. So very interesting. Uh, meanwhile, we've got the Singleton of, of Glenord, well, the Glenord Distillery, one of the biggest. Well, anyway, let's put a lid on that 18-year-old so it does its thing. It gets a little bit of breathing done, and yet it doesn't lose all of its, uh, its ABV and uh, long-aged goodness. Okay, so we'll put a cap on that one, and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Well, I've recorded the Royal Loch Nagar 12-year-old Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey Review. Let's get on to the Singleton of Glen Ord, 18 year old. Oh, I can't wait to smell this. Okay, let's give that a whiff, shall we? Oh wait, we want to check out the color first, don't we? How am I going to do that? Well, we'll just have to go straight up. Oh, <laughs> that's, okay, here we go. All right, let's have a look at the color of the Singleton of Glen Ord, 18 year old. What do you see there for color? To me, that is quite an antique golden hue. Something like 24 karat gold, or perhaps Indian 24 karat gold. Um, maybe even something that's been out for a while and has a little bit of tarnish going on. Nice color. Now, there's no mention on the bottle here as to whether color has been added or not. I would guess that probably yes, that some has been added. It's 40% ABV, the lowest possible to be called whiskey to be called Scotch whiskey also, and yet it's got a fairly nice rich color. So, well, you can investigate and find that out. If you can find a legitimate source that mentions that this is definitely uh, with a bit of color added, please leave it in a comment. All right, now, uh, oh, we wanna check out the legs also. Boy, what am I gonna do here? Well, I'm gonna smell it first. I'm really curious how this smells after having the lid on for about 20 minutes or so. Let's see. Yeah, there's some heavy leather, a little bit of furniture polish, new car smell, brand new furniture, walking through an old forest with lots of fresh oak smells, but also musty smells from the floor of the forest. Interesting. Okay, let's check out the legs on that one. And I would expect, since it's older, that the legs would be a little bit slower. And I expect that because there should be also a little bit more, uh, I guess we'll call that wood originated content, uh, which will be some, some sugars and some other types of, uh, of chemicals that, uh, that will come into play here. Okay, let's check that out. Here we go. Yes, fairly slow, and they hang on the glass quite nicely considering it's only 40% uh, ABV. So you see some nice drizzling going on there. And again, a nice sort of hanging on of the glass at the upper end there. There, look at that, it's dripping down very slowly. Well, anyway, let's hope that that translates into something nice in the mouth. Okay, on to the nose.
All right, so get that bit of leather and a little bit of that uh, sort of a uh, oak furniture sort of a smell or a, a furniture polish. But I also get some rich apple and some toffee. Caramel, yes, especially toffee, a little bit richer, a little bit darker, almost like a, like a coffee-esque type of a toffee. And I wrote here, a little bit of Irish coffee. There's fresh oak timber and just a light peat, kind of like a brush fire or perhaps when farmers are burning the stubble, you get that little bit of a waft. And very interestingly with um, uh, Glen Ord, I didn't realize that they have some uh, maltings there. Now these are drum maltings, not quite the same as floor maltings, but still hands-on right there at the distillery. And that malt that they make apparently supplies all of the northern Diageo distilleries, including Talisker, and they'll even do some peated runs to supply Isla for, uh, for their peated single malt scotch whiskies. Oh, now, did I mention the pencil shavings? <laughs> uh, all right, let's get on to the palette, shall we? Cheers, everyone. Mmm. It's so rich, and yet it has a very nice sweet sour balance. I wrote here, it's kind of like tart apple pie filling. And I wrote very strong sweet sourness. There's also wafts of, of smoke that come up your nose. Mm-hmm. Big caramel, lots of apple, and when you swallow, you really do get that uh, that sort of uh, waft of uh, of peat, a little bit of sulfur, I think, um, something that co that's coming from that that extra copper contact. Hmm, some pepper, and I also write some sulfur. That's good, and uh, then interestingly, I wrote here. That part of the apple, after you've taken a bite, that gets brown after exposure to air. Then when you come back to it, it's not quite as fresh, crispy, sweet, but it has a different sort of a flavor to it, doesn't it? And uh, here it is quite nice. Mmm. They call that rust? I forget. The finish, well, it's medium long. It's also medium dry. Apples. These are fresh apples, by the way. And of course, some of the tart apple pie filling I mentioned. There's a light bit of coffee. There's even a little bit of mild chocolate hanging about there. Uh, and as you swallow and as it fades, it's basically like apple skins. Hmm. You know, my grandmother used to make apple pies from scratch. I'm sure a lot of your grandmothers did. Now, would you eat the skins? That's what I would do. I would sit there and just munch down on those apple skins as she cut them up to get ready for pies. Anyway, all right, let's add a little bit of water to that. Not much. I think that should be good. But a milliliter I've added. Now it's quite nice, neat, and if you are um, doing business in Asia, or if you have family out here, um, or for whatever, for whatever reason, are you traveling in Asia, you, you name it, I think you should get yourself a bottle of this. All right, now interestingly, with water added, I get a little bit more, a little bit more peat, and I really recognize that this is a component in uh, some of the Johnny Walkers. It's really interesting. And in fact, this might even be a component in some non-Diageo uh, blended Scotch whiskies, I do believe. I, I wouldn't hazard, well, what I'd like to guess, well, okay, I wonder, I wonder if Glenord 
a little bit of Glenord 12 year old and a bit of Glenord 18 year old happen to be in the Chivas blends. That's my guess. It's just a guess though. I have no way of knowing. Uh, they might know and if, if so, well, and if I'm right, well then I'll expect a job offer to my email, markswhiskeywhistle at gmail.com. <laughs> oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, now I'm getting a bit of applesauce. Fresh applesauce, a bit of cinnamon, and still some very fresh oak. This really has nice wood management. And of course, you have to assume, being the size of Diageo, you have to assume that uh, since they are, they know that single malts are uh, where they're going to earn their profits. Okay, they'll, they might break even with blends. In fact, they're probably losing a bit of money with blends right now. Um, maybe not Johnny Walker, but I'm sure some of their other blends are underperforming. Uh, however, the single malt category is exploding. It's apparently 27% of global sales now for Scotch whiskey. Um, and that's all expensive stuff. Anyway, so they're making they're they're making their profits with malt, and it's uh, kind of a malt war, isn't it? So they'll want to be putting some uh, their whiskies. They want they'll want to be putting their new make into some nice wood. And that's what you've got here. Okay, with water. Let's check out the palette. Cheers. Hmm. This really shifts over to almost a largely sweet sort of a flavor. Just a hint of um, a tartness and astringency is left here. Rich caramel with apple slices. And there's still a little bit of smoke in there too. Now, I would guess that if there are some people out there who are not exactly on board with blended, sing uh, blended Scotch whiskies, you might think it's because it's blended with neutral um, uh, a Scotch grain whiskey. Uh, now, I would have to say that probably that's not what it is. Probably that neutral uh, neutral green scotch whiskey that's aged for whatever the age statement is on that bottle or if it's an NAS then well it's at least three years old probably older if it's more expensive but you know for example um, Johnny Walker red label um, probably I would say that the grain whiskey the grain uh, scotch whiskey in there is probably for six years old something like that it doesn't really taste immature. Um, it doesn't taste immature. And I say this because I've tasted some immature spirits coming out of, for example, Canada. I've tasted some new make uh, coming from uh, Japan and from Denmark. Um, anyway, so I don't get that, um, that raw almondine sort of, uh, um, you know, ageless whiskey flavor. Uh, anyway, so I doubt that it's the grain whiskey that is the issue with your taste aversion. In fact, it might be the sulfur heavy blends that are in there to provide kind of like a, a base tone. And uh, things like Glenord and um, um, Mortlac, uh, Craigellachie, um, these types of malts are very potent and probably that might be one of the reasons why you're not that thrilled with the flavor of some blended scotch whiskies. Um, if you are into the lighter space sides, uh, then well at least there's probably gosh 20-30 of those that you can enjoy. Um, you know but do do try to test yourself every now and again because it does seem as though um, that there is a progression of your palate and at some point you probably will start to enjoy these very heavy um, rich flavors. Alright, one more taste here. Hmm. 
And while the finish with water, pretty much the same. However, I'm noticing the, the peaty, smoky puffs a little bit more. Again, these are very subtle. Uh, it's just a, a mild little bit of, uh, of smokiness to it. Um, but it's really adding to the event here. Well, it's time to get on to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for the Singleton of Glen Ord 18-year Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. What's that going to be? Well, the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for the Singleton of Glen Ord 18 is going to be 89 out of 100. Yes, you heard right. 89 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for the 18-year-old from the Singleton of Glen Ord. I highly recommend this. It is uh, rich, flavorful, 40%, but wow, it really packs a punch at 40%. Have you had experience like this where a whiskey that you would expect would be watery, in fact, happens to be very, very rich and flavorful? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, all right? Now, before I sign off here, don't forget about the Whiskey Whistle Patreon account. That was open sometime, I guess, uh, late, late January, early February. The, the March newsletter went out already. The April newsletter is just around the corner. If you'd like to read that newsletter and get involved with Whiskey Whistle, get on to Patreon and uh, become a supporter. I would really appreciate that, as would Whiskey Whistle as a YouTube channel. All right, well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for what's to come. That's gonna be the Royal Loch Nagar 12 year old. So that's a little bit in reverse here, but hopefully we'll see you for that one. Take care everyone, goodbye. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now and we'll see you next time.